Thank you, Father. There was a couple pastors that were uh, in the meeting today from, from Oklahoma. If you're here, just stand uh, to your feet. Yeah, I, I saw something in the spirit today, and I, I, I was to Oklahoma City last year, and, and I know some of the things that went on. And um, I heard the Lord say, I'm building a wall around Oklahoma, and it's a wall that, it's a wall that will uh, keep out the, the adverse winds that the enemy wants to bring, but it will actually, there's a sustained wind that God's bringing even across that area. And I feel like there's been even like um, recently two shakings in the ground, but I feel like the Lord says there's like a third shaking that's coming, but this is not going to be a shaking that's going to uh, pull the church apart, but it's going to bring the church together. And then there's a move of unity in the whole Oklahoma City, even Tulsa, it goes to Tulsa. And I feel like God says he's going to begin to visit old moves of God it's from generational moves, but there's like a new faith that's raising up in the faith movement. There's a new uh, signs and wonders movement that's going to raise up in the, in the faith movement. And I feel like there's, God's going to visit even like places like, uh, because I feel like God, the seeds that are in the ground from Kenneth Hagin, the seeds that are in the ground and from Oral Roberts, the seeds that are in the ground, God is watering them. He's watering them. He's watering them. And I feel like out of that area, there's even coming a, an, a, an anointing to reach universities. And I see like, who's this young couple here right now? I see, I feel like that God has given you, oh my gosh, you, you guys, okay, from Norman, right? Okay. There's, there's like, there's something, there's even like God wants to give you space on the university campus. I didn't re recognize you before until I said that. I'm like, okay, now I know who you guys are. There's, there's like a, um, there's like a, I, I feel like you love what you do in your church and stuff, but there's something like, say, God, there's got to be more. I feel like there's an off, um, off schedule day. You're going to have church on the campus. God says, don't worry about having church just on Sunday because on, the, on campus, we're going to have church on a different day. And I feel like that the Lord says he's going to begin to even open up like an auditorium on the campus there. And this is going to be a year where God even, it's like, just ask him for whatever you want. It's like, you feel like, well, we don't want to ask him for too much. We don't want to be a pain in the neck. Be a pain in the neck. Ask him for more. Ask him for the sound system. Ask him for, for uh, people to, to come and, and, and support you. Ask him for the, the security that you need, whatever you need. God's going to give it to you because God's about to visit the universities in Oklahoma. And I feel like that the Lord says, even the way that God's even been stirring something in your heart. And I feel like that God's had you almost like on this uh, three-year journey. Well, she's been on a three-year journey. You've been on a two-year journey. But I hear God say like, she, I got her into a year into it because then you couldn't get out of it because I got her all the way into it three years ago. Now you're stuck, buddy. So I feel like that the Lord's saying that God's gonna, God is going to begin uh, to even kind of extend some things. I feel like there's something that God's doing within the worship right now that's almost like people want to argue about the worship, and I feel like there's some even things that have come against you in the worship. Do you lead the worship there? Yeah. Okay. There's some things that have come against you. Even some people want to do it, you know, do it a certain way, but I, I hear the Lord say, I'm going to raise up people who really want to worship in spirit and in truth, and the key to your life is you're an authentic worshiper. You're an authentic worshiper, and God's going to raise up authentic worshipers there. Don't give up on worshiping. I feel like there's sometimes you just come in early and God says, I've just, God, please show up today. Please show up today. And God says, I'm, I've, I've watched you when you've worshiped alone before anybody else was there. I've watched you when you came in the night before and worship. And God says that all that worship has been building up and building up and building up. And there's coming such a visitation. I feel like even when you go back, there's going to be such a bomb of the Spirit that's going to drop within your church. There's going to be such an outpouring that's going to come where people that have been hesitant, that have, that have kind of been with you in word, but not in deed, are going to be with you. So God, I thank you what you're doing there on the university campuses, God. And I thank you they'll be, be able to honor the past, not, not dishonor it, but they'll be able to receive the new as well. Matthew chapter 13 is written all over you. That in the kingdom of God, there's ancient vessels and there's new vessels, and God wants them both. You don't have to get rid of the old people to have the young people come to your church because you're going to have an intergenerational church. That's what you're going to have because that's your heart. In Jesus' name, amen? Amen. Pastors back there, 
I just feel like the Lord says, you're the new power team. You're the new power team. And I saw you guys almost like taking the phone book, like the old power team used to do, and ripping it in half. And I feel like the Lord says that, that even as I visited you in power seven years ago, I'm going to double it in this season, that this is a, there's a new visitation in power. But it's, this is going to be like, that, like the power team of the past that used to gather a crowd for, to do you know, acts of power for evangelism. But this is going to be true power evangelism uh, that takes place. Place. And I hear the Lord say, this is going to be your, even where power evangelism doesn't just take place in the church, but it takes place out of the church. And I see some like outdoor things that you guys have planned. And I feel like the Lord says, plan an outdoor festival and I'll throw a party with you. Plan an outdoor festival. And I feel like there's an outdoor festival, even in places where people were displaced from their homes. And even as you, even in places where people were run out of their homes and communities, God's going to restore communities. But also I feel like there's a grace for progress. Property. Are you looking at a building right now? Is there a, a, like a land? I feel like there's land adjacent to where you're at that the Lord says, like, you took a piece of your land, and then right next to it, there's more land that God's about to release to you. And it almost feels like we can take this parcel, but not the one next to it. But God says, no, I want you to have like all the way to the corner, the, the, all three. Am I making sense to what I'm seeing? Okay, so it's like you're looking at this one piece. And you can say, yeah, I think we can manage that. And God says, no, I want to give you more than you can manage because I can manage way more than you can manage. So he wants you to go all the way to here because it's important that you have like right of way or something. Like there's some people who want to make it hard to get to you, but God wants to make it easier for people to get to you. And you've been kind of put in the back parcel, but God's going to give you all the way out to the road to give you right away because he's going to have you seen. In fact, I feel like you've been looking at a new sign. And I, I say, even as you put that new sign up, I'm going to show up with signs and wonders and miracles in your church in Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. It's good. Amen. What time do I have till, Chris? Oh, whenever I'm done. Okay. Israel. Jesus. We love Israel. God, thank you for what you're doing in the nations. I want to leave Cindy something to do. <laughs> oh, Jesus. There are some really amazing things that are going to happen this week. But, you know, it starts with perspective. Because, you know, we're people who want to say what God says, but we can't say what God says if we can't see what God sees. And so seeing comes before saying, right? Discernment comes before declaring. And so why don't you just stand to your feet. I just want to bless you tonight. We're going to have a great week. We're coming back here tomorrow, and someone's going to probably come and close. But I'm just going to pray for you and, and dismiss you. Here's what I want to pray for you. I want to pray for you for eyes to see, okay? So God, would you please just give us eyes to see. First, God, we want to see you. We want a spirit of wisdom and revelation so that we might know you. I want to know you, God. I want to know you more. I thank you for how much I've known you, God. I thank you for how much I've known you, God. I thank you for how much you've shown me of you, God. But I thank you for more, God. I thank you for more, God. I want to see you, God. Lord, give us eyes to see you. Now, God, I ask you for perspective of ourself, that we can see ourselves the way that you see us. We can see ourselves not the person we were born to be, what we were created to be. That with Jesus, we add up to what you say about us. And God, help us to see our, prophet, our community through prophetic perspective so that we could truly be a prophetic community that sees our community with prophetic perspective. In Jesus' name. Amen. Give about five people a high five and say, you add up to God. Amen.